friends and welcome back to my channel. I just received yesterday a wonderful deck. It was a great surprise. I did not expect this to be as wonderful as it was. This is the Golden Girls Tarot. I saw it on a Facebook group I was on and I thought, well, I love the Golden Girls. It was a show I watched, you know, during the 90s when my daughter was young. It was one of her favorite shows. Now that my daughter has a college-age daughter of her own, they both absolutely adore the Golden Girls. So I thought, well, you know, I'll order this deck. It's a novelty deck. That's how it's being marketed. And I thought, you know, for it was less than $20. I think it was $18 something, including shipping. I thought, how can I lose? So I ordered it. I hadn't really seen much on it. And here it is. And when I looked through it, I was just amazed. Now, there is an artist that I had seen do a couple of uh, a couple of cards, but not a whole deck on the Golden Girls theme. And that's, uh, if you look on Etsy under Springhead Girl, you will see Minerva Torres has done a card of Sophia as the High Priestess, Blanche as the Empress, Dorothy as Justice, and Stan Zbornak, who is Dorothy's ex-husband, as the Hanged Man, and Rose is the Fool. So I have a feeling maybe this artist was inspired by seeing those initial images on um, on that Etsy store. But anyway, let's kind of go through this real quickly. There's no there's no little white book. It's a really nice box. I mean, better quality than a regular flip top box. Very useful. I hate the boxes where you have to pull the tab out and you ruin the tab and the box is terrible. So that's a really great quality box. So thank you very much to whoever produced this deck. Let's see. Uh, it was produced, I don't see who. It's produced as a gift deck, so Smith Street Gifts. I don't know who printed it. Maybe China, who knows. There is a, not a little white book, which is kind of a shame. I wish there was a book with this. But there's just this single card that gives you, um, a little information on the deck. Golden Girl centric deck based on Rider Waite uh, and how to do a reading. So that's that for the information that you get with this deck. So it's not great if you're a beginning reader. You might need to have some previous experience with Rider Waite to really uh, relate the meaning of the cards. So here we have the Fool, Rose Nyland. She is the innocent, naive, uh, always seeing the good in life, one of the uh, of the four golden girls. So this is perfect for Rose. I love her little leopard print dress there. She's ready for a night out on the town there in Miami. The cardstock is very nice, and you could trim the edges if you wanted to make this a little bit of a smaller deck. Look how beautiful that cardstock is. The backs have kind of an Art Deco design. Love the palms. And I love the fact that she's got a letter in her hand, like she got some sort of good news and she's running out to meet somebody, perhaps. So that is the Fool. Here we have Sophia Petrillo as the Magician. Ooh, the breeze is coming up here. Really nice. She is the, um, she is sort of the uh, manipulator of the four golden girls. She is Dorothy's mother and she sort of uh, maneuvers things to the way she'd like them to be and tries to help the, the other three younger ladies out. So I love this interpretation of the magician as Sophia Petrillo. Here we have Blanche Devereaux as the high priestess. Really beautiful card. I love that she's got her feet on the moon, like a traditional High Priestess card. She's got the book. She's got the serene look on her face. Really pretty. The Empress is Dorothy Spornak. Look how pretty that is. The pink dress that she's wearing. She's got a, a lovely little turquoise ring. She's got pomegranate trees behind her. And then this is Dorothy's uh, ex-husband who she was married to for so many years 
30 or 40 years before he left her, but he is depicted as the emperor in this deck. So there we have the emperor. We have Sophia again as the Hierophant, which is great because she's the one with the age and the maturity in the group, and she is a uh, mentor or a person that the girls would go to with their problems. I love she's got her little purse on her lap. That purse that Sophia in the show The Golden Girls always had it with her. Really like that. She always had a little dress, you know, kind of hitting her at mid-calf. Very cute. Then we have... Sophia as the angel in the lover's card. We have Dorothy and her husband Stan and they've got a little distance between them even though they've been lovers for so many years so this is really a poignant card. They were lovers but yet it didn't last. This chariot card is a lot of fun because there we have Blanche who's a very fun lady with her two good-looking guys and that is just something that is so perfectly representative of Blanche and the Golden Girls. Just really cute. She's got her little cowboy outfit on. They're not horses, but hey, what the heck. Very cute. Then we have Sophia as Strength. Very nice because she is kind of the rock of the family or the... It's not really a family, but it's kind of a, um, a group of friends that have become a family. So she is the matriarch of that group, and I like that she's representative of strength. The palm tree with the coconuts, we've got the lion there, very nice. Here's Rose as the hermit, and she is a bit of the, kind of the outsider because she's... Um, She's a little different from the other girls. She's a little more introverted. She's a little more self-reflective. And she makes a really good hermit. I love that she's out there on the lanai with her flashlight and her... I love the flip-flop slippers. Really cute. Unfortunately, she has a really kind of a sad look on her face. Another thing that I really enjoy about this deck is you can... The art, artwork is very amazing. You can immediately recognize uh, the faces of the actresses, Betty White, um, Rue McClanahan, then we've got B. Arthur. I mean, you can just recognize them right away. Here we have the Wheel of Fortune, which is a pretty much a run-of-the-mill Wheel of Fortune card. It's got some Egyptian symbols. And we've got the symbols of the elements. So I really like this. It's more pleasing than a lot of the Wheel of Fortune cards I've seen in other decks. I would have liked to see some carry through of the theme of Golden Girls in this card, but hey, you can't have everything. Here we have Rose as Justice, which is perfect because she's sort of the she's sort of depicted as a perfect person. She she does the right thing. She is concerned with um, with right and justice. So, or she's a perfect person to be representative of the justice card. Although in the Springhead Girl uh, Etsy store, we did have Dorothy representative of justice. And in that Springhead Girl um, Etsy store that I mentioned earlier, we had a card representing Stanley as the hanged man, even to the point of having his toupee hanging down so I think this the idea for this card may have come from there because that was way back in 2017 was the uh, the most recent posting that she did there so here we have Stan Dorothy's ex-husband Stan's Bornak as the hanged man so he kind of kicked Dorothy to the curb and at the end of the show Dorothy remarried so he sort of put himself in a self-inflicted limbo there and I love this death card I think this is one of my favorite death cards I've ever seen here is Dorothy we've got the thicket of white roses holding the scythe and the skull the horse in the background and she's just the perfect person to represent the end of something she ended a long-term relationship and went into a 
uh, temporary relationship with the other ladies and then on to a, another permanent relationship at the end of the series of the show. So just perfect. I love that. Here we have Rose, Betty White as Temperance. Lovely, lovely. And then, of course, we have Blanche Devereaux, or Rue McClanahan, as the devil. She's got her cheesecake. That was a recurring theme in the series. The girls really love their cheesecake. And, of course, she has love for other vices, such as uh, sexuality and um, monetary excess. She's got even the uh, earrings that are electric sort of correlating with her electric personality. The little wink, isn't that really cute? I love that devil card. I mean, I can't tell you, I just was so amazed when I looked through this deck, I thought, I love this deck, I absolutely love it. Here is Shady Pines. Now this was sort of legendary in the uh, Golden Girls series. Uh, Sophia, I believe had come from the Shady Pines retirement home, it burnt down, so here it is burning down. And then throughout the series, uh, her daughter kept threatening to return her to Shady Pines if she didn't behave. So there we have Shady Pines as the tower. Blanche as the star out on her lanai. So she's got one foot on water, one on the earth. That's a great representation of the star. We've even got a very traditional looking star um, background there. Very re reminiscent of Rider Waite star card. Her little uh, chemise with a little lacy over jacket is really sweet. Really cute card. Here we have the moon featuring Dorothy. Beautiful. You know, this kind of reminds me of the moon in um, Lenormand, where the moon rep more represents fame. She just looks like a very famous old time movie star there. Really beautiful. And of course, who else to represent the sun but Rose? Look at the sunflowers. Isn't that, that's just perfect. She's doing the little, the little kick there. So Rose as the sun. Here we have Judgment, Sophia. Sort of uh, letting those girls know that they need to be awakened to the important things in life, we've got Rose and uh, Blanche here, but we don't have Dorothy. Which is fine because we've got Dorothy featured in the world. And this is just beautiful. I love this uh, wreath made of tropical uh, palms and hibiscus. And Dorothy's holding the world in her hand. And really the show is about Dorothy. It's about her, um, her exodus from an unhappy marriage and how she comes to forge this friendship with the other three ladies and how at the end of the series she remarries. So it really is a full circle of the world. Now each of these individual suits of the Minor Arcana are claimed by one lady from the Golden Girls because you know there were four of them. There was Sophia, the older lady, her daughter Dorothy, and then we have Blanche and Rose. So let me get these separated out here so we can go through them real quickly. And I'm going to back this up a little bit so you can see all the cards. All right, so here we have wands, pentacles, cups, and swords. And these are all the aces. They are rather uh, a nod to Rider Waite. These look very much like the Rider Waite cards with the hand coming out of the clouds. So those are pretty, pretty typical Rider Waite. Okay, then we have the suit of wands is basically represented by Sophia. So we've got that fiery energy and Sophia is a very fiery lady. 
So that does really well represent the suit of wands. Here she is in the two of wands, looking out. Uh, dominion is the um, toth meaning for the two of wands. So she's sort of surveying her kingdom. And even though she's an aged lady, she's always looking forward. So I like that card. The two of pentacles is Blanche. Blanche represents the pentacle suit. She's more earthly minded, uh, more monetary minded, more sexual minded. And so she's a great person to represent the suit of pentacles. So here we have Blanche in the two of pentacles. The suit of cups is represented by Rose Nyland, who came from uh, St. Olaf in Minnesota. I kind of have a, a soft spot for this Rose imagery because my mother really reminds me of Rose Nyland and my granddaughter actually went to St. Olaf College for a semester. So I have a lot of uh, connection, a lot of deep connection to the imagery of Rose and the idea of Rose as the representation for cups, which is, represents emotion. And here is Rose. In the Two of Cups, she's got her one of her boyfriends, Miles. Her boyfriend, Miles, is in quite a few of the uh, episodes of The Golden Girls. So there they are as Two of Cups. Here is Dorothy, Two of Swords. So she is a very good choice to represent the Suit of Swords. She's very decisive, very cutting. Uh, she's always got sharp remarks. Uh, her life has been filled with a lot of sorrow. Or she quite frequently wore these long chemises in the show. All right, moving on to the threes. Here's Sophia, three of wands. Fairy Rider weight, three of pentacles. There they are crafting some sort of a goodie, probably a cheesecake or something along those lines, working together. Here we have the three ladies together in the Three of Cups. In a celebratory moment, again, the ever-present cheesecake. They look all so radiantly happy. I just love this, love this series so much, and it's so sad to me to think that Almost all of them are gone, except for Betty White. It was a wonderful series. Here is one of my all-time favorite Three of Swords. Because here we have Dorothy. She had the sorrow of her husband leaving her. Uh, here she is out on the, the lanai. And she has that look on her face like, what happened? <laughs> and ordinarily, I cannot stand the imagery of the Three the Three of Swords with the Three Swords stuck through a heart, but in this card it just seems to fit perfectly. So I really love this Three of Swords. Moving on to the Fours, we have Four of Wands. There we have Sophia with her boyfriend Miles. Four of Pentacles, we've got Blanche getting ready to depart on a journey. And she's got her four pentacles there. Sort of the power base card. Four of cups. A little bit of uh, sorrow or regret. A little bit of boredom. She looks like she's ready to move along to something, but she doesn't quite know where to go. So there is Rose as the four of cups. And Dorothy as the four of swords. Resting out on the lanai with her drink and her hibiscus in her hair. The only thing I would have done differently because this deck really does uh, hold pretty true to Rider Waite, but in Rider Waite we would have had three swords on the table and kind of one sword up above here. But you know, that's just quibbling with details. It's a beautiful card and I love it. Four of Swords. Moving on to the fives. Fives represent conflict and change. Here we've got Five of Wands, a competition at bowling. Five of Pentacles, we've got a little shake up in your financial stability, 
your job or in her case it looks like it might be even health so some kind of sorrowful thing we've got the rain coming down the sleet here we have five of cups with rose and she's kind of got that regretful feeling we've got the focus on the three spilled cups without seeing the two cups that are still full behind her so she's focusing on the negative negative. and here we have five of swords again a very typical rider weight image and this is pretty representative of the relationship that Dorothy and Rose had uh, Dorothy was always kind of making fun of Rose, besting her with wit and humor and uh, you know Rose was sort of made the butt of a lot of jokes so she kind of won the battle but did she really win the war when she's alienated a friend? That's kind of my take on the Five of Swords. Okay then we'll move along to the Sixes. Six of Wands which is kind of a victory card and here is Sophia winning the best friend of the year award six of pentacles here we've got Blanche on a shopping spree she's got abundant resources and a lot of a lot of uh, wealth and security and enjoying it six of cups we have an abundance of emotion and nostalgia and here we have uh, Rose and it looks like her boyfriend Miles it would have been kind of nice you know Rose had a a boy a former husband that she always spoke of Charlie and I think it would have been nice to have had Rose and Charlie in this card six of cups that usually represents happy memories and nostalgia but it's also nice with a new love and the Six of Swords, we have Dorothy persevering, sailing on, moving away from Stan to something new. On to the Sevens, which are about a confidence, decision making. We've got the Seven of Wands, Sophia, wearing her pirate outfit. I believe in one of the episodes she worked for a, um, a fast food joint where they all wore pirate outfits. So there she is holding her ground. Sophia as Seven of Swords. Here we have Blanche, Seven of Pentacles. Very typical Rider Waite image. Here we have Rose with the Seven of Cups. So she's trying to envision all the choices that are ahead of her and select the right one. And that is very typical Rider Waite image. So if you learn to read with Rider Waite, you shouldn't have any trouble with this deck. This is also a Rider Waite image, Seven of Swords. There's Dorothy making off with some of the swords. Stealthiness. And again, here is a Rider Waite, strictly Rider Waite image. There is nothing to do with the Golden Girls in this card. Here we have the Eight of Wands, indicating swift motion toward your goal. Eight of Pentacles, the accomplished craftswoman, making her cake. Blanche, you're doing a great job. Here is the Eight of Cups, Rose moving away on to something new. And the Eight of Swords, Dorothy feels trapped and she's not able to move forward. On to the nines. Nine of Wands, we have Sophia. So perseverance, hard work, a lot of effort that's paid off. Nine of Pentacles, there we have uh, Blanche enjoying the fruits of her labor. She's got a drink there and her sunglasses on the lanai. No tropical bird, oh well. The Nine of Pentacles in Rider Waite has a lady with a bird on her hand, so I always kind of like to see a bird in this card, but that's just a personal preference. Nine of Cups, Rose enjoying her cheesecake. Look what a pretty smile she's got on her face. That's a beautiful card, I love it. 
I love this deck. I really love it. I'm so surprised because I, I thought it would just be some kind of a like a gift shop deck that I wouldn't really care for. And this is a very carefully done deck. Very well done deck. Here's the Nine of Swords with the typical Rider Waite nightmare type imagery. So Dorothy is being tortured by her own thoughts. Okay. Moving on to the Tens, we have the Ten of Wands. Sophia, rather overburdened there. Ten of Pentacles. We've got a peach tree, I believe this is. Um, peach is representing the South, where Blanche Devereaux came from. And also the Ten of Pentacles represents uh, heritage, uh, inheritance, that sort of an idea. Abundant good health legacy. So this card really embodies that kind of a feeling. Here we have the Ten of Cups and there is what looks like a young rose from the back and she was married for so many years to a gentleman named Charlie that we never saw in the show but we can imagine that this is probably Charlie from the back and they had a daughter. I believe her name was Kristen. So there is the happy family Ten of Cups. And then we have Ten of Swords. This is sort of a bittersweet card in this deck because uh, yes, she does have sort of a voodoo type um, image here, all these Ten Swords stuck in Stanley's picture, but yet she does have Stanley's picture on her lap. So, you know, um, she's of course got a love-hate relationship with her ex and this very well embodies that sort of an idea. Just the wistful way she's looking out the window like the regrets you have after a long relationship ends and the things that could have been done better but weren't. Alrighty, then we move on to the court cards. So here we have the pages. We have each of the golden girls as a page holding their element. We have Sophia, page of wands. Blanche, page of pentacles. And I love how she's got on her pantsuit. Those were very, uh, she was very often pictured in a pantsuit. And Rue McClanahan actually did her own line of clothing uh, years afterwards on Home Shopping Network. She had a lot of nice things. Here we have Rose's Page of Cups. Very cute. And Dorothy as Page of Swords. Now the Knights may be a little more hard to connect with because some of these uh, actors or characters in the show were only in maybe, some of them were only maybe in one show. But we have the Knight of Wands. This is Cesar Romero and he played Sophia's boyfriend, Tony. And probably only in one, I, I can only think of one show. But very obvious that it's Cesar Romero. The artwork is so well done. You can obviously tell that that's him. So Cesar Romero is the Knight of Wands. The Knight of Pentacles. Uh, Pentacle suit is related to Blanche in this deck. And this is Blanche's dad, Big Daddy. So there is the Knight of Pentacles, Big Daddy. The Knight of Cups. And this kind of is an interesting figure. You can see how small this gentleman is here. The Knight of Cups was a character that was just in one episode, I believe. It was uh, Dr. Jonathan Newman, who was a uh, boyfriend of Rose. So there is the Knight of Cups. And here we have, I mean, the minute I saw this card, I knew right away. Looking at the face, I said, that's Dick Van Dyke. And sure enough, that's Dick Van Dyke, uh, Knight of Swords. He plays in the show a boyfriend of Dorothy's named Ken, who was a lawyer. And a lawyer is a great choice for a Knight of Swords as well because uh, swords represent communication and the law, the mind. So this is perfect for Knight of Swords. Okay, then we see the Golden Girls again represented as queens in their suits. We have Sophia as the Queen of Wands. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I love the um, 
Sunflower and the Black Cat. Oh, and I would like to mention also these thrones are all very Art Deco looking. So very, very in keeping with the um, aesthetics of the show, which was Art Deco. We've got the palm um, sort of shadowing each card. So there is the very beautiful Queen of Wands. I love her yellow dress. The Queen of Pentacles with her rabbit. Very Rider weight correspondence there for this card. I love that. The Queen of Cups, which is uh, Rose Nyland. I believe the way the show was written, Rose came from a dairy farm. So it would have been kind of fun to see some sort of a dairy uh, imagery in this card. But this is really nice too. Look at her pretty face. Very beautiful. And then we have Dorothy, of course, as the Queen of Swords. We've got a couple birds in the air. So she makes a perfect Queen of Swords, in my opinion. The Queen of Swords represents um, seeing things clearly, being just, and Dorothy certainly does represent all those mores. And I love her purple dress. And then we have the kings in each suit. They also are on these little Art Deco type thrones with the palm trees behind them. Here is the King of Wands, and this represents a boyfriend of Sophia Petrillo named Max, who was in quite a few of the episodes. So that is the King of Wands. King of Pentacles. We only saw this gentleman in one show, or one episode, and this is George Devereaux, who Blanche assumed to be dead, but it was her husband and he apparently staged his death. So that is the King of Pentacles, George Devereaux. Then we have the King of Cups. This again is uh, Miles, Rose's boyfriend, in quite a few of the episodes. And then we have the King of Swords. And this is Leslie Nielsen, who Dorothy married in the very last episode of the show. If you look at his face, you can tell that it's him. The artwork, like I said, is just really wonderful. She really captured the essence of the actors and did a great job. So, Leslie Nielsen as Blanche's uncle, I believe his name was Lucas, he was an uncle of uh, Blanche and he came onto the show and Dorothy and he fell in love and she married him at the end of the series. So that is the Golden Girls Tarot. I love the cardstock. I love the box. I love the backs. I love everything about this deck. This is one of my very favorite, favorite cards in this deck. I hope you enjoyed this quick little walkthrough. I know walkthroughs are not that exciting when you're watching YouTube videos, but I think this one is pretty special. So I hope you enjoyed it, and I will talk to you again next time. Please like and subscribe to my channel. And we will talk to you again later.